so we have had a hard time of constructing a core. But we know we have a core already, so the situation is the following. Um, tilde, the real line, one from the other is on the trace top. When you have a trace, semi-finite normal trace, you have the following, the tau tamed. Uh, used to be called uh, uh, the measure, tau measurable, but I don't think that term is pretty uh, g uh, good, though the name by Arvin Siegel, that the, this closed T, closed operator affiliated um, M, if the, uh, the E lambda of absolute value, of tau goes to zero as lambda goes to infinity. E lambda of x equals is the characteristic function of the half line. So half line zero lambda one. So spectral, spectral projection respond to that how so that is the, this is equivalent to saying that there is a lambda zero uh, lambda zero such that tau of e lambda zero of absolute value t is finite so if this is a finite then uh, because that projection itself E lambda of t is going uh, strong, converging to the zero strongly. Semi-finite uh, trace uh, is uh, not continuous, semi-continuous. So way as soon as it hit the finite and then going down, it's just like a measure, right? At the measure, the way you have E n. The En is empty, but the measure of En need not to be. That uh, consider a Rubik measure, and from that uh, inter uh, the lambda on half interval, it's, uh, intersection is empty, but the measure never goes to infinity, stay plus infinity all the time. So. Uh, so if you once hit this one, hit the finite value, and then goes down to zero. So at any rate, so this is a tau tamed that the operator t. And the miraculous uh, is the following. The set of all tau tamed and tau is the set of or closed operator uh, affiliated to M, which is tau tamed. Then what happened is the following. When you have tau time operator S and T in M, the tau time, then S plus T is pretty close, closable. And the closure is a unique closed uh, operator which extends S plus T. Any other uh, extension further extension is no longer closed. Of course, you use set theory, you can do that uh, if the domain is not the, full, the whole domain. So at the same time, the same is, uh, you call, call it S, uh, bold face T, 
it's not uh, indicating this is not just the uh, algebraic sum of two operators. Sum, on the uh, uh, sum's case, it is defined on the intersection, right? The, the, the intersection of uh, domains. But uh, it was, uh, the uh, domain was big enough and the sum is, remains uh, closable and they close it. And then if, the, if you close it, no longer proper closed extension of this operator. That's called hypernormal. No, actually, hyper maximality, maximal extension. And the same with T, and product. It's a it's remain pre closed, and that's S dot T. But uh, since we are not really doing the, the theory of tau time, et cetera, that we are just using it, uh, we uh, simply write S plus T and ST. With the understanding that uh, this means a closure of algebraic, algebraic product and algebraic sum. Okay. So this is uh, indeed the star algebra over C uh, of the so that state star algebra, evolutive star algebra. No, no, of course. And theta, uh, theta T acts on M. Uh, you, uh, okay, for the unbounded operator, there will be a various way to uh, define the action. Well, maybe all natural thing is, okay, represent M tilde on the uh, Hilbert space using trace. Uh, that's the tra L to M tilde using trace. Then the all automorphism comes from unitary representation onto this space, and the unitary U alpha T U alpha star to be alpha of T. Remember, for instance, uh, last uh, today and yesterday, Professor uh, Strutter is saying automorphism is, has a canonical implementation, for instance. So uh, you can do this concretely. Or if you like the space-free things, then the huge uh, acts on the spe spectral projection, so extent like that. Now, Okay, then uh, you have the following, the, the alpha, the grade. Well, T is said to be homo homogeneous if the uh, theta S of T equal to minus alpha st, alpha complex number. So unless alpha has absolute value, no, no pure imaginary, unless uh, alpha is pure imaginary, uh, this uh, operator t cannot be bounded because that the absolute value minus alpha s, absolute value equal to e of minus real part of alpha. Uh, well, I'm, okay, alpha. <laughs> this alpha is now a complex number. So if uh, this grows, alpha, uh, actually alpha s, s sit here. If the real part is done zero, this S runs all real line, this exponential decay in the negative for infinity and the exponential growth on the uh, positive infinity, 
so no way to be bounded. So the no way to put the norm on okay, for, uh, for MR uh, on those operators. And the core of alpha is those T in M such that say uh, the S of T is e to the minus S uh, alpha times T. Okay. Then the uh, okay. There's a uh, two regulating condition. One is the behavior relative to theta and relative to trace, the ta tamed, tau tamed property. And that two together tells you if uh, the real part of alpha is negative. Oh, by the way, let me see. You might feel that the, the, uh, the tau time property, what is it? Let me uh, 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 explain. Let's take the M tilde to be error infinity of real line. And the theta, of, uh, theta S of F of P equal to, as usual, P plus S. And uh, your major tau, uh, the major tau, okay, we, we are not going to do, use this tau. Uh, okay, uh, what is it? Uh, maybe it's a good way. Anyway, uh, tau of f equals the integral of f of p e to the p dp plus infin uh, minus infinity to plus infinity, so real rhyme over real rhyme. Okay, this weight has at the zero, one. Okay, this, so the suddenly uh, L1 over M tilde tau contains the CC of R, compact support, and then you can integrate. But now if you think about that function is uh, going at infinity this way, say, such as f of x uh, equal to x, then uh, this, uh, this part, lambda to that, integrate over that, well, this function is blowing up, so the uh, function is go this way, then uh, the tau uh, measure of this is infinite, so no way to have finite. So that means f is not tau measurable. Okay. However, uh, this function, if you have uh, the going, growing infinity at the <coughs> negative infinity, for instance, then that will be fine, because in that case, the lambda. Uh, e lambda of that means that, that, that this portion, <coughs> this portion is uh, E lambda of F, is that portion. And the measure, definitely this portion is finite from plus minus infinity to lambda, e, e to the uh, maybe long lambda, something like that. So it goes to that fine, no problem. Okay, so this is the tau term property, okay? tau term property. Now, uh, 
I, uh, this is coming in, so now let's keep it. I use this one to very many times, so this will be A. A and uh, A R tau and the theta. Okay, uh, this is an example. At the same time, this will pop up so repeatedly. Now what happened is, if T is, in, uh, say, why don't I take a positive operator in M of uh, M uh, tau, okay? The tau tamed homogeneity one out. Oh, by the way, let's call it this alpha to be, we call it grade of operator T. And so this is uh, the grade of H equal to one. See what's happened. What is, what is it? Okay, now. Uh, theta s to the h i t equal to e to the minus i s t h i t. Okay, that's the uh, the grade one, the homogeneous element. That's by the order by definition. Now, uh, what happened is tau measurability means E lambda of H tau finite. Let's uh, take E to be support of H. Okay. So the Theta S of A equal to support, uh, uh, I, I write it to the script H, S of Theta S of H, which is <coughs> S of the E dam, uh, oh, okay, no, and, uh, okay. This is uh, S of E minus S. Uh, yeah, it, uh, we are calling degree one, so the T could, uh, so the H. Right? That's, and the scalar multiple of operator does not change the support. So this is a support of H. So that's E. In other words, this is a projection of a fixed point, which is M. So M is a fixed point. So that projection is in the M. So this, uh, now you write, you consider u of t, as now fix, choose a phi, w0 of m, phase for semi-finite weight. Then we know phi to the power i t is in the <coughs> extended the unitary of M. It's a, a well, subgroup of, M, of unitary. One parameter is a subgroup of U of M tilde. Now you consider U of T to be H to the power I T, P to the minus I T. Yet, how, what is h to the it? 
non, uh, uh, not uh, non singular, it has zero space. So H to the I T is H to the I T in M tilde E. So the reduced algebra and the zero outside. And H to the I T of orthogonal complement we understand E to the I T to be zero. And the only place where H is non singular the H to the power I T. Okay, so that makes sense. So the zero portion is zero. You cannot do anything about the zero. So with this uh, uh, promise, we write this way. Then see what happened. S plus T, which is H to the power I S plus T, phi to the minus I S plus T. Both are, well, as soon as uh, you restrict H, the attention to the support of H, this is the uh, one parameter group. Well, actually, semi phi of minus a uh, phi minus i t. Uh, okay, I write this one. <sighs> I oh, I write this way. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, okay. H I S phi minus S phi, uh, phi plus I S H the I T phi to the minus I T phi to the minus I T. Oh, oh, I S. -S. Right? That's that. Now, what was this? This was I as uh, was U of S. And what is U of T? Phi of I S U of T, phi of minus I S. We know what this is. You, this is the, the, actually the reason why we brought in. This one is sigma phi of U S, sigma of S right to ut. This is the cocycle identity relative to modular automorphism of phi plus, okay, because this is not a unitary in E, what is the U of S star U of S? This is uh, uh, H I minus I uh, no phi to the minus I S H to the I S H to the oh minus I S I S H to the minus uh, no mm, uh, uh, no phi uh, phi to the I minus I S. Okay. Then what is this? Uh, H, so this equal to sigma minus I S 
Is it really the Kirke? No, this is a plus. Yeah. This is a plus. Uh, this is the support projection, isn't it? This is a support projection. E, phi minus I, yes. This is a sigma phi S, E. Okay, then the, we make the other way, U of S, U of S star. Uh, U of S, that's equal to H to the minus I S. Uh, uh, no. I S, phi I S, H to the minus I S. This one equal to one. So H I S, H minus I S. Once again, this is a one parameter unitary group on E. H, so this is E. Oh, this tells you precisely uh, the, uh, what you need. We have H and uh, uh, the uh, U of S is uh, co-cycle identity and the proper uh, behavior about uh, the uh, support. So the, the uh, we heard from the Professor Stratila there exist omega. They need not be state uh, positive linear functional. The way such that. Uh, uh, so this uh, uh, D omega D phi cosecal derivative is precisely U of T. We know this as a, a, the positive linear function exists, which realize U of T to be. Uh, to be the uh, uh, this one parameter quasi cycle. All right. Now uh, what we uh, I want to do? Yes. Then we can check. The dual weight omega hat, uh, which is omega i theta, i theta of x equal to integral over real line theta uh, ts of x ds, which makes sense only when this integral makes sense, namely positive operator when this, uh, so x positive, what you do is minus r to r theta s of x ds, then this is increasing along r because you are adding on more and more positive operators, so it is increasing. So if it is bounded, then it has a limit, and that's the integral, right? So if it is uh, the bounded, that is uh, uh, definition domain of I theta uh, plus, and uh, Theta is just a linear combination of those positive integrable elements. The four elements involved in it. Okay. And at the same time, 
because we have this way, this is uh, tau of h dot one half x h the one half. Or you can, well, maybe you want to write this way instead of being a trace, uh, this omega hat of x equal to uh, trace tau of uh, x1 half h x1 half. That's the uh, for m till the plus. In that way, you avoid. Well, uh, how to evaluate uh, the unbounded operator? O okay, that uh, you have a way to handle it. One plus epsilon h to the minus one limit f strong goes to zero. That's the way to 100. You take this one, probably in take limit. OK? Uh, this is actually, this time, kind of a trick is all over the place in the theory of weight. Uh, but, uh, the, of course, you can write this to be tau of h half x, h one half. Omega half is there. Okay? Now, what happened? On A, tau measurability, remember? Tau on A. A, uh, oh, no, 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 not A. The, now, uh, in M's tilde E, so everything cut down by E. Because H has that uh, bound. You have, uh, that's uh, tau of E lambda of H, goes to zero means the at least at some point finite. That tells you right away that uh, this tau restricted uh, tau restricted to A is semi-finite. So tau itself defines a measure on the spectrum of A. Sorry, uh, what, is A? what is A? A is the phonema <coughs> uh, uh, algebra generated by H. Generated by H. Or if you don't like this unbounded operator, then that case h to the power i t, t runs over real. Then one parameter unitary group in a e h on which. OK? And, and, and it is always isomorphic to the uh, OK. The, this is a model. This is a model which I defined in, uh, as an example. But uh, we, uh, let me see how, what's going so sh Should I, you don't like it? Let's write it in the temporary B. It, is, uh, it makes your it feel easier. OK, then uh, we will see what the B relation and the B and the A. A, B. All right. Now, what's going to happen? Of 
course, this is one parameter in group. Spectrum is real, uh, the, uh, the uh, spectrum is real, real line, and you can uh, in integrate uh, by the spectral decomposition of one parameter in the group given by the spectral projection on real line. That much you know. But uh, let's see how it's going. All right. Now, uh, tau restricted on B is semi-finite. So that means tau on B gives you a good measure on the spectrum, semi-finite measure on the spectrum of B. So that's the tau is a measure, is a sigma finite measure on the spectrum of this B. Okay, I keep this one. Which is uh, actually subset of real line, right? This goes. And the written as H, uh, H D I T equal to real line of E to the I T lambda D E lambda. Something like that. So this much is okay. This is the decomposition of one parameter. Now, however, so oh, you have so you have error infinity. You have infinity of the say what x subset of x and the tau. Well, identifying the tau and its, uh, the measure induced. Now, theta s of uh, f acting on p. Oh, how it, so h is a function. h of lambda equal to lambda, isn't it? So that is the uh, way spectral decomposition is given. Uh, well, no, no, I, I don't like, uh, no, I, I don't like to write this way because H is a positive function, lambda takes the value, my negative, uh, no. And I like uh, more, I would like to say, feather S. H I T behaves e to the minus I S T H the I T. What on the tau of theta S equal to E minus I tau? What this tells you? First Theta S and the eta HIT are satisfying the Heisenberg commutation relation there. Uh, you can write uh, e, uh, theta S by one parameter integral group U of S representing appropriate Hilbert space. Then that requires the te tells you uh, that the, the Heisenberg relation. That we know such a thing is unique and it is now how to, what is it? This, te uh, this tells you that the spectrum H is already line. So this X has to be whole real line. And the theta S is a translation. And H has to be the following. So theta S of F of X equal to F of X plus S and uh, theta uh, S of H of X equal to E to the minus S of H of X 
V in the H of X plus S equal to E to the minus S of H of X. What is it? So H of X equal to, uh, there may be constant times, but uh, uh, e, uh, e to the minus X. That's very quickly, uh, you can multiply by scalar all the time. The scalar is an ambiguity. Okay. So you are so the and the phonema algebra you're considering B was indeed A. That's why I kept A. L infinity of real line, indeed. And the H is the function uh, uh, H, uh, HX equal E to the minus X. Now, the tau theta S equal E minus S tau. What is this tau? Tau of F then equal to f of p e to the p dp, uh, uh, or, or uh, constant times. Maybe I use constant here. All right? Now what that tells you, the omega hat, omega hat was, Tau of uh, xh, hx, e to, uh, h of uh, h, uh, then there's a p pixel, e to the minus x. So, omega hat of f, this is a genuine dp, uh, a constant time. Uh, since you had the constant here. Okay, so the example I have given to you is not the example, but the genuine situation governing the positive operator here. So that is a, a, a situation we, we are now in. So now, uh, so let's investigate further what uh, Omega is uh, doing. Omega. Also, uh, I tell you that. Um, so let's uh, uh, summarize it. Tau of f is over real f of p a uh, constant. Tau of f equals to constant time e to the p d p. And uh, H P equal to E minus P and uh, omega hat of F is constant C times F of P dP over the real. Okay. Now, uh, now comes the part that tau is, by the way, uh, do you want to keep this projection along or just the pay, the restrict your attention down to M sub E and uh, forget about E, 
just the H is non singular. You can do that, right? This is just shrinking your world and looking at that square. Um, so everything is now. Now, which means, well, now tau in A is semi finite. Trace on the Ponoyman subalgebra is semi finite. What does it tell you? Tell us. Is stand for this is a classical result. I think it is a Dixme or the existence of conditional expectation from big algebra to the small algebra, in our case A. M tilde, conditional expectation. Then projection of a norm one, normal. And that's uh, expectation from M tilde to A, which is uh, determined by the following. Okay, conditional expectation plays a big role in two one factor theory, such as uh, this. Uh, uh, Subfactor theory, but uh, it's just in the type three case still it's, uh, it, it is a quite important thing. Tau of e of x equal uh, and y and y in a equal to tau of x y. Uh, th this is the uh, description of conditional expectation, just like a projection. And in a product case, in the, if you take a vector in the subspace, in a product against any vector, is equal to the uh, projection down to that Hilbert space. The, the, the same story goes on. And uh, being algebra, you have to work a little bit more. Okay, now how this conditional expectation behaves against one parameter of the morphism theta, right? Now, let's examine tau of E of theta S of X, Y equal to tau of theta s of x, y, right? That's a, just copying this one. Tau of circle theta s, x, theta minus s of y. Theta leaving uh, a globally invariant. So this is an element in a. So that means tau circle theta s uh, 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 constant expectation e e to, uh, theta minus s of y. And uh, you apply theta s to the everybody, so tau of theta s of e of uh, x Right, the theta s cancel here. Why? That e was tau preserving. Yeah. E, e, e is a e was tau preserving. Huh? It was e, e tau is preserving. No, no. Uh, 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 it is also tau preser preserves tau. It is a unique tau preserving. Yeah, tau preserving. But here you have tau circle preserving. No, but uh, the theta s does not preserve the tau. It uh, um, the relatively. So, so, so the e should change, no? Yeah. So that. So what we got is that the uh, e of that theta equation? s. That equation. Yeah. So how do you how do you get the that that equation? Uh, which you mean? Uh, that, that in the second line. Uh, this one. 
Last one? Top one. This is the. Here to here. Yeah, well, because theta s is our operating to everybody. It's a, I'm rewriting. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. <laughs> here, I think then you need here. Tau of e to the minus s. Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is equal to E minus E tau. Then this is equal to E minus S tau of uh, theta S of, no. Theta tau s inverse of theta s of e of x applied to y. Now we will have this one. And we know what this is. This is the e, uh, e s tau, right? E times s tau. So this is equal to tau of say the S of E of X, Y. Uh, yeah, so thank you for pointing out the data. So uh, compare the top line and the end, you find say the S of X uh, of E, equal to uh, theta s of e of x. This is true for all x in m, n, tilde. OK. Now we take the following element. Now, in the statement, I th maybe I stated the theorem. Now I take A in M tilde plus such that uh, I theta of A equal to 1. OK? That is. Uh, uh, Remember, we have a way to produce such element. Remember, we had the following. So let me quickly remind you what we did. Uh, if you have tau of E finite, then theta T of E is of tau equal to e minus uh, t uh, e of e hence and e uh, theta t of e you, you recall that one then e uh, and then uh, e, uh, this e zero and then if you, oh, you, uh, you uh, own it. No, oh, I think we are done already. So this A is fine. And if you have uh, say that T of E zero, this is a orthogonal E zero. So, and the uh, summation similar to the N E zero, and in the old, equal to say f0, then this is in mt, and then take uh, uh, maximum family, etc. right? Uh, so that you have projection e0 such in the projection, wandering projection such that c dot t to the n of e uh, 
or orthogonal is zero, and the summation of three dot two to the power is zero equal to one. That's what uh, we did, and then we state that is a finite sum, f n k m three dot to the power k over e zero, then f n goes up to one, and if you make i theta of i n, then that's a two n plus one time this now. Uh, this capital T. So oh, oh, with this, um, we have plenty. If you divide by T, then uh, this number, then I say that of this uh, uh, Fn is the, the we had. And uh, so you have plenty element. OK. Now, I want to compute what's going to happen to the conscious expectation of A down to script A. OK. 1 equal to conditional expectation of I theta of A. The Expectation preserves identity. One goes to one, which is integral of theta s of a ds. The e is a continuous operation, so you can this e go inside. Uh, So this is integral over E circle theta S of A ds. We just proved this equal to uh, theta S of E of A ds. And then we evaluate at the P, see what happens. Say the S uh, integration of a real line of eta of A, ds evaluation of P, which is we know it all is one, but uh, what is this? This equal to real line uh, A of P plus S uh, ds. That's the uh, effect of theta s on the function of the element a translating. So the integral suddenly doesn't uh, change the p, uh, the constant. That's uh, left the left translation invariant. E of a of s ds. Ah, this means this function, the e a, E of A is element E plus whose integral of A, A, P, D, P equal to 1. So it is L1 element, positive, not only bounded, but uh, integrable, relative to Rubik major. So it is very nice uh, situation now. Okay, now the choice of A. I did not refer to H, did I? Just a cho I chose A uh, with uh, operator valid weight value equal to identity. That's all we uh, requirement for A and the positive. 
All right. Now I want to see one up. Oh. Tau. What is this? This is tau uh, h one half a on h half. Oh, uh, the, this equal to tau of uh, h e of a. Uh, you can uh, do the, for the same. The continuous expectation because h one half is a the quasi element of a or the affiliated with a. This that. Yes, this is what integral of e of a of. Uh, constant times, p, dp, right? This is omega hat. This was, um, this is omega hat of e of a. Uh, the omega hat of e of a equal to constant times real line of E of A dP, which we know C. And uh, this, uh, at the same time, same time, this is uh, omega hat of A, which is omega I theta of A which is omega of one, norm of omega. That C is indeed no, norm of omega. So when H is given, then what have happened is then there's a omega. Uh, now this tells you finite. So it is a element in the predial, element in the predial. So H gives uh, omega, which is in predial. And indeed, this is H omega. Well, indeed, we identified H as H omega or omega itself. Uh, the sit inside the M tilde, the affiliated with M tilde. Okay, and that value does okay. I repeat once again, does not depend on A. Does not depend on A. The choice requirement is the uh, I theta of A equal to one. And now, if you look at this, what happened is this is integrable relative to the tau. It is registering finite value. And uh, we took that h arbitrarily from m1 plus. m1, and uh, m means the uh, German m, Gothic m. So, uh, what we have proven is, what we have proven is now at another i theta of a equal to 1, a is m tilde positive element, a one half m of one a one half. Okay, if there, here's an uh, uh, 
which containing L1 of m till the tau. And the tau value of element here, uh, T, one half, is independent of uh, choice of A. It depends only on T. If T is non-positive, what do we do? Just to use the polar decomposition, polar decomposition of T, and apply the, the what we have done to the absolute value portion. And uh, this is independent of A. We write it as T. It's a finite value. And uh, you can, of course, uh, this is uh, M by module, so you can write uh, X here, and you X T. And uh, what happened is, with this, you can write x sub t, the pairing. Then this set, m of, this is precisely the predial set of t, uh, m1 is precisely m sub star under this pairing. And therefore, we write this as the L1 of M without referring to any no, uh, physical normal state or uh, weight, L1 of M. And uh, with this, what happened if you consider M of one half, if you have S and T, then you can take a T star S is now in M1. T star, uh, because it's a one half, our joint is in the, instead of one half, but, uh, okay, M alpha adjoint is M alpha conjugate. Okay. okay. So, oh, this is in L1, M1, which is, I would declare it's one, L1 of M. So you can integrate now, then you get the number. So uh, S T absolute but no inner product to be integral T star S. And this gives uh, makes this space, M1 half, Hilbert space, it is complete. It is complete. It is complete, therefore this is L2 of M. L2 of M. Now, L2 of M, what's the difference between L2 uh, uh, using Hilbert space things? It is L2, that uh, Hilbert space H is a space of vectors, right? This L2 of M is a space of operators. It has a spectral decomposition, etc. cetera, makes sense. There. And so that's the difference between the the, the uh, conventional way of writing FH. If this is the standard H, suddenly this is a unitary equivalent to the 
m and uh, m acting on the one from the left by multiplication. But the difference yeah, appears uh, clear here is this L2 of m is the space of uh, operators regulated by that theta. That's by the translation by uh, the e to the minus one half of i t times uh, the t, right? That's the you know, regula regulation. Okay, this is the canonical L2 space attached to. So whenever for the multiple m, this is available to you. You use it or ignore it or don't see it, it's up to you. It's a flying around. Uh, okay, now what happens is, for example, today, this morning, uh, well, uh, the professor uh, Strutter was uh, showing you with some quite uh, hard work. Because uh, I, this is uh, yeah, the relative to that natural cone P. If and only, uh, no, oh yeah, then this is equal to the omega of xi, omega of eta. This implies that. Okay, but what happens if you see omega 1, omega 2, that positive linear function. If you do view this as an element in M1, positive element M1, and then Square root one half omega two square root. This is well known uh, inequ the inequality due to Lubner, Heinz. There are actually uh, industry about operator monotone function. The power k to the power alpha. Alpha, alpha between uh, one and zero is an operator monotone. It preserves the operator one. But alpha exceed one, it's no longer. So uh, this one the, is a, 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 I don't, uh, I should have uh, made a check. I, I wonder if this, the converse is also true. I, I don't, I doubt if, if this is true. Uh, if it goes to the square, the root, it, is, it is a squaring, so you, you don't expect, I don't expect. Okay, so if you know that uh, this the heinz rubner theorem and the operator monotone function, then this, uh, this implication you don't expect. If this occurs, that's something very special going on. But I don't, I, uh, I, susp I, uh, I doubt if this is the case. I, I assume this is not the case. They I did not check uh, before coming. They should commute in some sense. What? They should commute. Oh, yes. If it is commute, then there's no problem. Yeah, of course, uh, the, the x to the x square is a monotone function. That, so, so if they don't commute, it's not uh, uh, no guarantee and very likely, uh, very unlikely to have that implication. This is from Rubner theorem. But uh, that is, 
that comes up, you, you see that the, here you have operator realization, so you have concrete way of the guessing, for instance, it is what's happening. So that's the power of the canonical Hilbert space. Let's see what this, <laughs> oh yes. And then uh, I think the time is going, oh, well, uh, oh, I did, uh, uh, indeed I didn't prepare for, for to go this far, but at any rate, what happened is, you know, in this uh, uh, the operator space is the following. Uh, M, uh, if you have this grade, uh, Q, <coughs> suppose you, t, you have a Tn of the homogeneous element, so the grade of Tn makes sense or up to 1. So grade is up to 1. Then what happens is a grade is the, uh, behaves like a logarithm, T1. Remember those uh, product is, uh, makes sense in the, because of the tau tamed property that the pro product is associated. This is in L1. Right, because grade is uh, the summing up to the one. So you can integrate. Then miracle call. Just like trace. The invariant and the circular the cyclic permutation, just like a trace, right? The, the trace is right like that. So this is the one thing. Another thing is, if you have uh, the, this homogeneity, uh, aroha and one minus aroha, m of aroha, and M of one minus alpha in duality as a Banach space. Uh, of course, this, uh, there's a limit on alpha uh, for the uh, real part. If the real part goes to the negative, it loses the sense. It doesn't, there's a zero space, right? So, uh, it, uh, Real part negative, and then this zero space, and the relative, and uh, this one is uh, go to the positive, go beyond the one. But the, uh, the other portion is a zero, so you cannot pair them. Uh, so, uh, so the limit, real part of alpha between zero and one. It is there are duality. Okay, if, um, uh, if alpha is not the uh, real, uh, the one half, then there will be a, the new Banach space. Of, of course, this is isomorphic to the real part of uh, the unitary. However, as a Banach set itself, it's a different Banach space. Isometric to the M of real part, pure imaginary. Okay, remember, uh, pure imaginary involve, so unitary transformation, so shifted the L M of, say, one half by e to the I, phi to the power I t of the, the, the so uh, the imaginary part, uh, but uh, nevertheless, this vector space, the Banach space, is not uh, just the LP. It's um, uh, isomorphic to LP, but uh, 
not uh, never be discussed in the uh, in the literature. Uh, besides, well, I did not discuss it. I just uh, introduced and leave it there. Okay, I think that today we had uh, enough. We, today we went over the details.